hi! This week, I'm going to show you five Harry Potter cocktails that I have thought about for a long ass time. There's a lot of shit here, and this isn't even everything, because there's secret ingredients for one of these. I did a remember all over the summer, which was just frozen cranberry juice ice cubes in a gin and tonic, basically. Uh, so as it melted, the more red the drink got, I thought it was a cute idea. So this is going to be that, but time's about a million. It's already too warm for the robe, so... Let's get into the first drink. This first one is tentatively titled Lily's Flower. Maybe it's Lily's drink. We'll just go with Lily's drink. <laughs> the main thing you're gonna need is some champagne. You're also gonna need one of these little wild hibiscus flowers in raspberry syrup. It's super delicious and some magic's about to happen. And yeah, I'm going double camera with this. Professional shit, you guys. <laughs> these little goopy flowers. They don't look particularly exciting, but put them in your champagne flute and add a little syrup too if you want. And then you add the champagne. And as the bubbles go, it's gonna make the flower open up. So that's drink one. We're gonna let that work its magic for a little while. Okay, drink number two. Here's the deal with this one. The non-alcoholic recipe is not mine. My friend Samowich made the best copycat recipe from the theme parks that I have ever had and we tried both in the same day. And best believe I have tried dozens of different iterations of butterbeer and nothing comes close to the shit she came up with. So if you wanna know how to make the soda and the whipped topping, cause she's got some secret ingredients I haven't seen in any other butterbeer recipe video, I'm gonna link to her at the little eye bar somewhere on here and at the end of the video. I don't know how that's not like the default butterbeer video for people. Anyways, and a fangirling over Sama. The reason I'm including this is because I have my own secret ingredient that's gonna make this alcoholic and I do have to credit the bourbon idea to my friend Sam, so thanks for that idea. Because I kept trying sweet liquors, and it just, it was too much sugar. And then he came out with a really nice bottle of bourbon and mixed it into the butterbeer when I made it one time. And it was heaven. So, that is my recommendation. I have a little flask of Jim Beam here, so before I add the topping, I'm gonna mix in some whiskey. Stir that up a little bit, and add the whipped topping. Look at that head. And there's your spiked butterbeer. This is, of course, my favorite recipe out of the bunch. All right, next drink, we're doing a shot. I couldn't find any plain glasses, so this is a Fun Spot glass. If you've never been to Fun Spot, get your fucking game up. This is gonna be a Felix Felicis shot. Ooh, almost breaking the limoncello. One of my favorite flavor combos is honey and lemon. So I'm gonna combine these two to make a heavenly liquid luck shot. I've never had this kind of limoncello before, so I hope it's good. Ooh, I have a little cork going on. Oh, it smells so good. I love lemon. I'm just gonna do half of each. So three quarters of an ounce of limoncello, and then three quarters of an ounce of honey whiskey. Doesn't have to be this brand. This is the wild turkey brand. It's fine. There's probably nicer brands. This is the color I was hoping for. I'm not gonna do a whole shot because I'm making so many drinks and it's not even noon. It's definitely strong. If you were looking to make a highball cocktail out of this, I would mix it with tonic water. Do six and a half ounces of tonic water and then do the three fourths ounce of each of these. Do I feel lucky now? No, but I do have that burning sensation in my chest, like when I drink straight alcohol. So does that count? One thing my friend Grant recommended is also adding that like gold dust powder, the edible dust. That's kind of glittery. It looks like that Vinique liqueur. And I would add a level of magic. I can't find that shit anywhere. And I've gone to about six different stores gathering supplies. This next drink is either going to be super delicious or absolutely vile. This drink is gonna be Polyjuice Potion. Just for transparency, my initial plan was to just use regular hot chocolate, get like a nice brand and get some green creme de menthe to mix into it. But no, the liquor store gods were working against me and green creme de menthe just isn't sold in the state of New Hampshire anymore. Couldn't find it anywhere. I went into the like big, big liquor stores on the highway and couldn't find anything. And it's like a goddamn shopping mall in there. So I'm taking a completely different hot chocolate route. And this may be more true to the series because they do make uh, bummer faces when they're drinking it. And I don't think this is going to taste gross. It's just going to be a, a jarring flavor. What you're going to need is a pack of caramel hot chocolate. I mix apple pie moonshine into this shit all the time. Pour that in my mug. I already got some hot water. Gonna give that a good stir. And now we add sour apple pucker. Oh, it's not even that colored. Oh no! Well, I have some green glitter I'm gonna mix in here. I have not come this far to be let down now. I mean, food coloring seems the easy option, but that also feels like I'm cheating you guys, being like, hey, you want a green drink? Use color dye. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say that that did the trick. That looks disgusting. It's like muddy sewer water. You could add the whipped topping, but this does have flavoring in it that I don't know I want to add to what's already happening here. So I got the trusty old aerosol can. 
Let's give this a try, shall we? You know what? It definitely has a sour candy flavor to it, because that's all sour apple pucker is. It's basically melted warheads. But mixed with the caramel, it's actually pretty fucking good. I am impressed. You know what, Decoupier? I take back all the shit I've talked about you over the years. Just to address it now, there was a 0% chance I was gonna say this name brand right. I'm just saying what my bartending teacher taught me 10 years ago. <laughs> Whew, all the sugar and booze is starting to hit me. So for the last drink, I was gonna use this little tiny glass, but there's no way all the ingredients are gonna fit in here and mix well. So we're going mason jar. This one I am titling The Bloody Baron. I'm gonna start with some ice. I'm gonna do the vodka first because this is what I always over pour with and then I can kind of gauge everything else otherwise. That's probably too much, but you know, we're going with it. Didn't shake this up very well. I add the V8. Vodka and V8 is the basis for any good Bloody Mary. What really makes a Bloody Mary, and what makes this a Bloody Baron, is all of the add-ons, which include Worcestershire sauce. I like a lot of it. Horseradish, which some people are very opposed to. I got extra hot horseradish because another ingredient I was trying to find, but just doesn't exist in New England, was ghost pepper hot sauce, or ghost peppers that I could infuse into the vodka. So extra hot horseradish it is. Decent sized spoonful. Next is my definitely ghost pepper hot sauce and not Frank's Red Hot. Also in lieu of ghost pepper slices, I'm adding some jalapeno slices. This smells so hot. Oh, I almost forgot the pepper. That's like the best part. Sorry. Ooh, we're doing the damn thing, you guys. And then for my final garnishes, I like to add pickles. Bread and butter pickles will probably be kind of weird in this. Although, who am I to talk? There's Worcestershire and horseradish in this, but the only non-sweet pickles I like are the zesty garlic kosher spears. Add that into the mix. This isn't a prank drink. This is actually how I make this, minus the extra spice factor. And then the traditional garnish of a celery stalk. I grab my straw, do the taste test. Whew. My throat's a little hot, but it's actually more drinkable than I was anticipating. This may be my new go-to. Holy fuck, I put so much horseradish in there. Well, these have been my five Harry Potter drinks. If you'd like to see more silliness on a weekly basis, you can go ahead and subscribe. If you want the recipes typed out, you can go ahead and check out my Patreon. Here's the Remember All Drink Recipe video, and here's Sama's amazing butterbeer recipe video. Go peep that shit. Honestly.